Welcome my quizzical questers. I would like you to research that most everyday of items, tight ropes and the folks who walk upon them. What? You have 30 minutes to find your best wobbly facts. Come back here and tell me what you have found. Thank you all so much for coming back with your tightest of facts. Um, oh. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping that you've got a long and en enjoyable selection of <laughs> excitement for me. Um, I would like to start tonight's uh, podcast with a fact about tightropes from Nathan Kenny. Speaking of tight, have you guys heard of the naughty tightropes of Pompeii? Oh, Kenny. <laughs> Oh gosh! Yes. No, I um, haven't, but I want to. I want to present you um, in Mary Beard's lovely book about Pompeii, titled Pompeii. Um, Sorry, uh, Kenny, you I know got, we're allowed I'm, to look read on the internet, right? We didn't have to read it from books. I, I just keep everything on flashcards and I just look <laughs> things up. Um, I want to show you a picture of. Um, so this is uh, from. It's going to work great for the audio podcast. A lot, a, a painting from the bar it. on the Via del Mercurio. Well, the people on the audio podcast will have to listen to their reaction now and um, <laughs> decide whether they want to look this up. I just sort of positioned us here. <laughs> look at what these people are doing on tightropes. Wow. That feels um, unnecessary. <laughs> Tom, they explain that for us. That now, what is... you all see there is uh, what appears to be two Greeks <laughs> engaging in the coitus on a tightrope, whilst, what, whilst the person in the front of the coitus Picks up clearly waters a plant in a vase while <laughs> reading a drinking book. beer. Um, <laughs> but, uh, they're drinking beer, standing on tightropes, and doing stuff together. So, <laughs> all sorts of things can happen on tightropes. So, I guess my fact is doing things on tightropes goes back a long, long way. Uh. Sam Smith. So I learned that um, my favorite fact is a, a sort of a sub fact to begin with. It was that um, the proper term for tightrope walking is funambulating which I think is great, funambulating, um, which I put ambulating to walk and fun because it's super fun, I guess. But the um, the thing that I, <laughs> led me to that, um, I read that yes. and then straight away, I was like, is there such thing as a fun ambulance? Funambulate? Fun ambulance? <laughs> so I looked up how much it would cost for me to hire an ambulance to drive from my house in Auckland down to Kenny's house in Dunedin. And <laughs> it's, it's $200 for the initial 35 kilometers, but there's like, it's like fourteen thousand kilometers, so it would cost <laughs> it would cost ten thousand two hundred thirty six dollars and sixty six cents. Does that include the bit where you go through Wellington and we have the free ambulance? Yes, I think that bit's free. Although I didn't, I didn't um, calculate how much it would cost to go on the ferry. But I guess if you're in an ambulance, that probably just, just let have to you let on. you on. Yeah, yeah. No, the ferry <laughs> just gets out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. the, the water part <laughs> to just to the side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as a frustrated classicist, I just want to return to the land of pure facts, though, because the fun <laughs> doesn't mean fun. It means funus. It means rope, right? Which is the same as funicular, the yeah. cable car. Yeah. What about funus? Fun What's more oh, fun than rope? And, like, funeral. No, Super that's fun. fun. Yeah. Funeral. That's fun. It is quite funny that, the uh, like, funeral is an anagram of real fun. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, can you bring us back from funerals, please? <laughs> I certainly can. Uh, Superman used tightrope walking to beat up the KKK. What? This is, this is a factor of Madeline. Uh, this is, uh, I mean, it could be both. So, um, in so there is a there is a, a comic came out in in, <coughs> in 2019 called um, Superman smashes the KKK, and it, uh, so Superman smashes the Klan, and it's actually a, it's a comic set in 1946 where. Superman beats up the Ku Klux Klan, and it's um, it's got a whole lot of references to like original Superman. And in the first kind of uh, comics of Superman, he couldn't fly. Uh, he he did the whole leap tall boat into the uh, single bound, but he would also just hop onto power lines and run along the power lines, Amazing. and that's how he got around Metropolis. And so he does that whilst to get around to beat up the KKK in this comic. <laughs> well, I suppose it's natural that the KKK would hate him. He is an alien, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sam, I would like another fact, please. I want to get in and talk about the Willanders, who are the most famous tight rope walking family of all time, basically. Um, I came to find this because I, I wanted to find out who had done the highest ever tight rope walk. 
and I found um, Nick Willender, who was, uh, uh, he's, he's around today. Um, he was born the same day as um, Ashley Banks from Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Um, that's the character nice. name. The actress is um, Tatiana Ali. And he set 11 Guinness World Records related to tightrope walking and other things like this. He's tightroped over Niagara Falls, which was 550 meters long, which is like five football field lengths. It's a long way to tightrope walk. He's tightrope walked over a volcano. Um, he's the seventh generation of the Flying Willenders, who are the um, yeah this big circus family who do big acrobatic acts and stuff. I'd start, I've read quite a lot about their family. And my favorite fact that I oh, found no. out was that um, his great granddad, whose name was Carl Willender, he uh, <laughs> he um, he fell from a tightrope that was stung up in um, Puerto Rico between two two hotels, and um, he died. That was on March twenty second, nineteen seventy eight. He was seventy three years old. Oh no. <laughs> And he was so. This was when Nick Willender was one, and um, and that was the same day that the Ruttles came out. The Ruttles, <laughs> one of the Ruttles. Yeah, it's got so, Eric Idle in it. It's, yeah, it's it's, cool. it's a parody of the Beatles, <laughs> and it's really good. <laughs> so in my head, like the, the the kid who was one was told that he had to tightrope walk, and the granddad was like, "No, I'll do it for you, I'll grandson. <laughs> I, I, I've lived my life." Like, He's seventy-three. I, I mean, there's a lot to be said if you're old and you're going to die anyway from doing something awesome. Nick Willender then went on to do his first professional tightrope walk when he was 13, so 12 years later. And mm -hmm. um, and, the, and, and the reason Carl um, died is because the, the tightrope wasn't properly put up and there was a bit of wind. <laughs> I've had a bit of wind before and I feel like falling <laughs> from a great height. It makes it quite hard to tightrope walk, eh? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. Although it scoots you along pretty quick. <laughs> That's <It's> great. <laughs> oh. Tom, if you'd like to get off farts and back to tightropes, please. Uh, okay, I have to choose. I'm going to choose a different fake then. Um, <clears throat> okay. Okay. This is one for this is one for my homies, and by homies I mean anyone who lives in New Zealand who knows about uh, one of the Dunedin's greatest uh, attractions, Nathan um, Kenny. This, yes, uh, besides Nathan Kenny, um, the steepest tightrope ever walked on had an angle of inclination of 38 degrees, and that was achieved by Freddie Nock. Um, that is three degrees steeper than Baldwin Street, what? the steepest street in the world. And that's why I have that. Surely up. it would have to be a rope ladder at that point. Did he have prehensile toes? Could you like <laughs> put your big toes into training? Have the, that's the strongest effect. big toes. I want to be the best big toe. The best there ever was. Like, just hold on to the rope. <laughs> what would have been really good, I think, is because if, if he had done that at Baldwin Street, steeper, and then gone to the rooftop and rolled a Jaffa the entire way down it, oh, man, that would have just been the perfect, perfect uh, full-on circle. You'd have been front page of stuff and head of the 6 o'clock news on both of our channels. Oh. Nathan Kenny. Oh, oh, which one shall I do? So you mentioned the... Um, Carl Wallander, the great 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 granddad of the Flying Wallanders, going over Niagara Falls. No, he didn't go over. Nick went over Niagara Falls. Nick went Falls. over recently. Um, yep, the very first person to go over Niagara Falls was in 1859, um, and he was a guy who called himself the Great Blondini, but he was from France, and his name was Jean Francois uh, Jean Francois Gravelet. Um, but he did in 1869, 59, and what made that particularly awesome? was he stopped halfway, lowered a rope down, and there was a boat floating underneath him, um, the Lady of the Mist, and they tied a beer to the rope, <laughs> and he pulled the rope back up, and he drank the beer, and then he kept on going. And then he went back, and he, so in years after that, he went back and he sort of upped the stakes, he did a blindfolded, he cooked an omelette on the way, he had a little <laughs> gas-powered stove. Whoa, and on his way over. I'm not um, even kidding. I had omelets for dinner. Wow. Did you did you what? cook them over Niagara Falls? No, I didn't, but yeah. I am legally blind, so that's pretty good. Also, I didn't yep. make that's them, Meg good. made them. Yep. <laughs> but yeah. Um, oh, and he did he went over on a bike as well. Beer is not a performance enhancing drug, so I think it counts that he went over twice. <laughs> Okay. Is it the French take their rest break so seriously that you would continue to have one even if you're halfway across the tightrope walk? Well, he's, like, he's oh, French. 
French people need like a glass of wine every five minutes. So <laughs> I'm surprised he managed to last, last that long without having one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he uh, he preloaded before he did it, and they got halfway <laughs> and the bus was wearing off. <laughs> Um, as an addition to that, to that, Kenny, so um, do you know that's not the weirdest thing he's done on the, on the ropes? Uh, he walked over with a wheelbarrow and a lion. Is this one of those <laughs> IRL sense. demonstrations of the, you have a chicken and a sack of grain and a fox and you have to get them across the river? Yeah. It was pretty close to it. No, he had an angry lion in a wheelbarrow. He also did a washing machine. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Was the lion wouldn't... angry before it got yeeted into a wheelbarrow and <laughs> wheeled across Niagara Falls on a tightrope? Probably angry after, yeah. <laughs> I found out this week that lions and tigers only live for like eight to 10 years. And I thought that was sad. Oh my. No, about closer to like, I mean, I've known tigers. I've known tigers that have lived for like 16 to 18 years. So for the, I reckon for the last six years of Tom's lion or oh, tiger that he knew, it was just two dudes in a bad by tiger costume. <laughs> yeah, <it was> actually... <laughs> uh, Tom Adams, I would like another official fact from you, please. So tightrope walking saved gibbons. My favorite animal. So I'm um, so we all know gibbons. We all love gibbons. Gibbons are great. Gibbons are the they're called lesser apes, but they're greatest apes. Um, <laughs> they are short little guys with little legs and, and long arms, and they sing, and they've got really weird wrists that can swing all the way around. And I love them. I love gibbons so much. I would not want to have one as a pet because I respect them. God damn it. Um, but <clears throat> and uh, there's a population of gibbons called the Hainan gibbon, um, and it's on a, a Hainan Island in China. And in 2014, there was a big landslide and it basically forced all of our surviving members of, of this most endangered primate species in the world to basically have to jump across this massive gap in the forest canopy. And if they didn't do it, they would fall to their deaths, basically, or fall to the food of some other creature. So conservationists decided to help them out by basically just stringing ropes across the, the gap. And so the gibbons would do, 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 oh, across the, the tightrope and um, yeah, survive, except for the big ones. The really big males just jumped because toxic masculinity, but um, everyone else was fine. Can gibbons lower their arms from, or are they stuck like that? Yes, completely, yep, yep. Yeah, but, nope. yeah, the thing about gibbons is, their wrists are basically not attached. So their wrists are, wrists are kind of this almost like spongy tissue. So they can bend, swing their wrists all the way around. But that also means that they can't knuckle walk like other apes. So they and humans are the bipedal apes. Gibbons either swing through the canopy or walk on two legs. They'd be so good at doing the YMCA. Mm -hmm. Was it you who was telling me that the Gibbons in Wellington Zoo got put on like a timeout and stopped from going into the neighbouring enclosure because they kept eating birds and terrifying the children? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, was this, there was all of the monkeys. Oh, no, there was the so spider monkeys. Animals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically, monkeys just... They snatch a, a bird out of the tree and they just bite its head off like Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> I, I saw a, a capuchin just basically go, Hoo! and grab what I believe was a tui and eat it in front of a group. And we're like, all right. That's nature. Welcome to the zoo, guys. <laughs> had he had that gibbon walked halfway across a rope and then he grabbed a tui and downed it, and then oh, walked yes. the rest of it. <laughs> Our oh. other resident zoologist, Nathan Kenny. Uh, one of the places is mooted to be the birthplace of tightrope walking is Dagestan. Um, and you can still go to tightrope walking schools there. So Ooh. it's a very mountainous place. Um, and it's thought that tightrope walking uh, evolved, came to be as a way of getting across broken, um, so when rivers, when bridges went down, you'd string a rope and you'd get by for a while until you could rebuild the bridge. And there's a village called Skovkra. I think I, I've horribly mispronounced that. but You haven't, you nailed it. Yeah. But um, yeah, really uh, yeah you can still go and study tightrope walking there. And there's schools in tightrope walking and Amazing. you can do all that sort of thing in Dagestan. You know how... Um... I know what our first team outing is going to be. <laughs> Sam. Do you have a fact for us? Yes, I do. I think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to talk to the, talk about the Wellenders a bit more. Um, they, the Wellenders got famous because they didn't use safety nets. That was their thing, um, at, whereas other people did. Um, they, and they had this thing called the seven person chair pyramid where they would have some someone sitting on a chair and then two people on top of that and then four people on top of that. So it was like a big, up inverted pyramid um and it was great people used to come around come from everywhere to see it but then one day the person sitting on the chair fell <laughs> like sort of jolted but so the pyramid collapsed one of them died um some fell and were paralyzed but one woman managed to hold on to the to the rope and then they um then all the people around were like oh we've got to help this person down so they got this 
safety net in there. Um, so they finally got the well end as the safety net. Um, and then when she dropped down into the safety net, it kind of worked like a trampoline and it boinged her off and she fell off and really oh, hurt herself. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, she didn't and there's die. grandpa will end her in the corner being like, I told you not to use the net. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty funny. <laughs> Great. So two people fell and landed on their feet like cats and they were Amazing. perfectly fine. And the worst thing about it is the surviving members, so the three of them, the lady and the two that fell on their feet and weren't hurt, had to perform the whole, like a whole routine the very next day. They didn't get any days off. Like, oh my God. America, work, workplace safety doesn't yeah. really come into it. And they were like, no, get back out there. You've just seen your relatives die in horrible ways. But I, the show must go on. <laughs> if this is the reality of being in, a, in an acrobatic family in the circus, why did Dick Grayson need a tragic murder in his backstory? It sounds like they could have just gone with basic workplace safety breaches. Very mm -hmm. true, Jennifer Jewell. We've mm -hmm. absolutely picked a hole in Batman. I don't know how they meant to do it. <laughs> I'm never going to watch Look, we it had ever some Superman. Again. We had some Superman content before. We've got to have some Batman. Oh. Every podcast these days has sponsors. You guys are probably sick of them. Um, but, you know, it helps us pay our bills. So just bear with us. Just like walking a tightrope, balance can be hard to find in our daily lives, living in the moment or building a prosperous future, working hard or resting and rejuvenating. What if you didn't have to choose? Ask your doctor about anxiety. With anxiety, you can fret about the future and watch your present slip away without doing anything about either. Anxiety comes in many unhelpful and disruptive flavors, so there's sure to be a debilitating variant for you, just like COVID. Anxiety, because fuck you, brain, that's why. Nathan Kenny. Oh, so tightrope work walkers um, were common um, fairy, fairy, sorry, not fair, common fairground attractions for many, many generations through sort of pre medieval, medieval times. But they became associated with pickpockets and street walkers and con <laughs> men and all that sort of thing because you're going to be standing there looking up at the tightrope walker and people would come along and steal your wallet or, um, you know, just the general fair atmosphere. So um, in the 5th century in France, um, they banned them from performing in churchyards because you don't want those kind of people around churchyards. And that basically meant that all tightrope walkers were out of an income because all the fears happened. In, uh, so A, all the fears happened in churches. And B, most of the time, the tallest point in the village was the church spire. So they'd normally hang the um, rope from the top of the church spire to anywhere they liked. So, yeah, um, in the 5th century, wow. because of being judged by the company they kept, tightrope walk workers, uh, walkers were effectively banned from France. Wow, they were banned wow. for being dirty carnies, probably for the probably good. Did they try and justify it with some theological, the only person you should cast your eyes up to is the Lord? Or did they just go, now the only person who should be taking your money is the church? <laughs> I, I don't think the church had to justify much back then. I think they yeah. just did things that way. <laughs> I said so, that's why. <laughs> Oh. Right, Sam, uh, would you like to bring us some more biblical facts? No, I refuse to bring you a biblical fact, but okay, what I will ben. talk talk to you about is about speed. Have you have you heard of Usain <laughs> Bolt? He holds the record yes. for the fastest 100 meter sprint. Have you heard of Ashikawa Wubulakasimu? He has the world record for the fastest 100 meters tightrope. Do you guys do you, do any of you know what that is? What the speed was? What's Usain Bolt's record? 100 meters is his, a tenth his, of a kilometer. He did it in 9.45 seconds. I think that's Usain Bolt. I guess 9.7. <laughs> You're going fast. I'll go 11 six. seconds. Six seconds. Tom? Oh, six seconds. Um, well, you're all wrong because, of course, it's going to take way longer to do a tightrope than running on a track, you idiots. It was 38.86 seconds. So just... just, under just closest, so Ken, closest, closest, Kenny, Kenny was the closest, but you were also uh, like a quarter of it. <laughs> the answer. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's so funny. You, you just would have seen this guy just hooning along along the tightrope like Superman through Metropolis. It would have been amazing. That reminds me of um, when we did our episode about San Francisco and there were all the stupid things like the first person to cross the Golden Gate Bridge carrying a chicken, the first yeah. person to cross the Golden Gate Bridge hula hooping while listening to Danny Boy. Yeah. Like, you get increasingly specific to try and justify You've your You've got record. to find your niche. 
<laughs> Tom oh. Adams. Well, let me tell you about the first and probably only attempt to get a donkey to walk a tightrope. <laughs> uh, they go try to get a donkey to walk a tightrope. They set up a rope um, and it was like a downward slope, not quite as steep as, as, as Baldwin Street, but you know, downward. And they got the donkey to, to walk down it and a crowd gathered below to watch the donkey uh, traverse the tightrope. And surprisingly, disaster struck when the donkey fell off the tightrope and fell, plummeted to the ground. Now, the donkey was unhurt because of the crowd that gathered below cushioned the fall and so donkey was fine lots of injured people from a falling donkey <laughs> when did what that actually donkey happened was, do that uh, 1793 yeah so what i'm hearing is the donkey invented crowd surfing <gasps> um, actually what happened was the donkey was crossing a border with a whole bunch of drugs it was the original mule <laughs> uh, i would like some quick fire facts please starting with you sam smith Hens can tightrope. Um, there was a lion called Negus who walked on on a tightrope. The quote about this lion called Negus is that he wasn't the first tightrope walking animal. He was just the first successful one. Uh, Danny DeVito would be a better tightrope walker than Arnold Schwarzenegger. <gasps> is this center of gravity? Yep. It's center of gravity, yeah. Basically, the way they describe it is like a squat vase. Um, balance is better than a tall vase, a bodybuilding vase. Um, so yeah, because Danny DeVito has a very low center of mass and is quite good on a trampoline, as we discovered in the Danny DeVito episode. Uh, he would be a decent tightrope walker. Tight roping is the act of performing intercourse while wearing a catheter. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh that's how we're going out, eh? <laughs> I could do a different one. <laughs> Any, anything else. Literally anything else to end on. It, it, That'd um, be great. That fact is so bad that it gave me cancer. Uh, in Korea. <laughs> I had uh, cancer and I agree. <laughs> oh my God. In Korea, Luatagi is the traditional art of um, doing tightrope work, walking. And there's particular. And there's various set pieces that people do. And it's very artistic and lovely. And nothing at all like my last fact. <laughs> We've had some wonderful facts and we've had some terrible facts. Um, what? I would like to call out a few. I would first of all like to call out Sam for bringing up funambulating because as a word nerd, that's just very cool. Um, yeah. And also that you've costed out hijacking an ambulance. I think that's very forward thinking of you. I love that that's um, what you did with the time too. <laughs> oh, it you it hijacked took me like... it, but you pay for it. So <laughs> it's not okay. It took me half the time. Cheaper than Uber. Um, Kenny, my favourite fact of yours was... Uh, the great Blondini stopping for a beer halfway through his first yeah. crossing of Niagara Falls. That was fantastic. Uh, and Tom and a donkey inventing crowd surfing is, is amazing. And <laughs> I just feel like they should have tested the donkey's tightrope walking skills before they let it loose on a crowd at height. That seems logical. But I think my favorite fact has to be Gibbons tightrope walking to freedom. I think that's fantastic. So Tom Adams, you are the winner of this week's Big Fact Hunt. Thank you so much. Uh, I'd like to thank my fans, I'd like to thank Gibbons for being the greatest animals on the planet. Uh, and um, look, take the time, look at some videos of Gibbons, um, you, you'll have a really nice time. And, and um, yeah, uh, thank you all so much for having facts that made mine look better by comparison. Just kidding. <laughs> Well, if you would like to hear some more facts about a variety of wild and wacky topics, then tune in next week, either on YouTube or on any of your various podcast platforms. Hit like and subscribe. Tell us your favourite given or tightrope walking fact in the comments, and we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>